Good afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Mark McLean. I'm the CTO of Aconda um, Inc. Um, and so we're going to spend a few next few minutes kind of talking about Aconda. And really, if you were in the keynotes either yesterday or um, this morning, you heard a little bit about the newest project um, in the OpenStack Big Tent. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well, since Aconda is one of the primary contributors to the Astara project. So when we set out to when we set out to um, create the Akronda project, one of the things we wanted to do is kind of tackle some operational challenges that we were encountering with Neutron, and that it's, you know, managing multiple services um, is challenging. It, you can have, some of the services have their own orchestrators, some of them have different interfaces, and that if you're rolling out multiple clouds, and we began the Akronda project um, actually at DreamHost um, back in 2012, we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to roll out different um, deployments over time with a variety of different vendors and knew those deployments were going to change over time and were going to change. So some may have one particular vendor for SDN, some may not. And so we wanted to have the ultimate and flexibility. And so within that, um, we founded the uh, um, now Astara project, which is the newest member of the OpenStack Big Tent. And within that, w the project just kind of give you a little um, background since it's only briefly mentioned. It's de really designed to simplify the deployment, um, be compatible with the existing OpenStack e ecosystem. It doesn't replace components, it complements them, and also is naturally to be um, open and, and follow the four opens of the OpenStack ecosystem. So in terms of how Astara works, um, with in terms of, if you take a look at the reference Neutron, you'll notice that on the right-hand side of the screen, there's a fleet of microservices, and that with Astara, what we do is we actually simplify things by having a single process for Astara, which is then responsible for orchestrating the network functions. Um, and central to that is a process which we've kind of nicknamed the rug. It's one of those escape prototype names that's kind of stuck with us. Um, it's really, if you've ever seen the movie The Big Lebowski, there's a reference to the rug tying the room together. Um, and so also, if you look up Astara, it loosely translates into carpet, which is how we got that name, if you've ever wondered, the genesis of the name. So the Astara orchestrator is really uh, it's control plane orchestration. No components of Astara are actually in the data path. Main reason being is that we wanted to be able to take the best of the network functions available, whether open source or proprietary, and then orchestrate those via our pluggable driver interface. Um, within that, you know, the pluggable drivers is nice, but how do you keep those processes alive and, and well? And so what we did is we wanted to have the control plane to be highly available. So we designed it to be multi-process and multi-threaded. So from the deployment perspective, you have the opportunity to configure it. You can make the process as big as you need to be, or you can create as many of the processes as you need to manage um, the network service orchestration. Also, at the same time, we wanted to maintain the same um, API footprint from the tenant perspective in OpenStack. So we use the standard APIs for Nova, Neutron, um, Glance, and Solometer. And so when the orchestrator is running, it's responsible for watching changes to the logical model, and then it will render those down via the drivers onto the particular service. So, you know, and that service can be rendered, we'll, talk, we'll kind of touch on it a little bit in, in a number of different contexts, um, and also communicates with the workers, because if in some instances, if you were, say, deploying a service in a service VM, it's very easy to go Nova boot, but it's actually kind of harder to make sure it stays up and is functioning and continues to work over time. So the Astara architecture and the base of the open source project is, if you take a look on the left-hand side, you'll see that uh, Nova and Neutron, um, you know, Conda and Alistar run within the control plane. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll kind of see more traditional like network stack where you have your physical network, um, you have your overlays either being, you know, if you're using overlays, maybe being managed by OVS, um, Linux Bridge, or some proprietary. And Astara has an agnostic layer to it so that you can, from Astara's perspective, we don't really care what the L2 system is because really Astara comes back to the network principles we've used for a very long time, which is honor the different layers within the networking stack. It makes it very easy to mix and match and switch out components. Above that, you'll find the OpenStack APIs, and then you'll see the advanced services in terms of routing, um, load balancing, um, firewall. You know, once the once the team, Neutron team, and Mitaka kind of gets done rebooting that, and so taking a look at the Neutron reference, kind of from a data perspective, data path perspective, you know, typically you're running a, a network node. You may have one of these. You may have ten of these. Um, but the one of the challenges is those nodes become single points of failure, points of congestion. And so, you know, 
with Astara, we kind of work around that because now what we're doing is actually spreading out the services um, either on the VMs and the particular hypervisors or we're spreading them out in containers. That's where the driver model um, that I was talking about earlier is makes it very easy to say, um, to, to basically say, okay, I want to orchestrate this particular network function in a container or, network, or orchestrate it in a service VM. Um, you can also change the way it's deployed based on the driver as well so that you can have multiple different configurations. The new flavor framework gives you the option to kind of times that as well. One of the differences with Astara is that um, from, say, standard Neutron is from the ground up, Astara was designed for IPv6. Um, when we began the project, that was, one of our, that was one of the things that we were committed to, knowing that, you know, the world's basically running out of v4 addresses. We wanted to make sure we were ready for that. Um, also wanted to support dynamic routing. Um, one of the challenges with v6 still even in Neutron today is that dynamic routing is not supported. Astara does support PGP, OSPF. Um, whether you want your flavor to be Quagga or Bird or, you know, some in, in, you know, or maybe some proprietary, Astara can handle that as well, um, as well as to also provide a fast path to roll out for advanced services. So, like, if you have a particular load balancing vendor you want, writing drivers is fairly easy to do. And so, you know, it's a little bit about Astara, but kind of what, we've, what have we, the community has been working on upstream and, you know, Aconda, as a company, you know, provides services and support around Astara and is also one of the major contributors to the Astara project. And so what we've been doing in the last six months in terms of improving the HA story, I touched on that a little bit in terms of the scale out and scale up. Um, it's very interesting in terms of you can actually start multiple orchestrator processes. They will all um, communicate amongst themselves and then selectively um, chart out the number of um, network functions each is managing and it's automatic so that if you add or contract processes that pr that will automatically happen there's no involvement um, to cause a reconfiguration to happen the rug pr the rug processes will talk to each other and figure and figure out the appropriate thing um, also you know improving configurability I, I touched on that with the drivers you can have the ability to have different services provided so that you can provide them on a cost differentiated basis so if you have say for instance load balancing you want to provide on hardware for production workloads and maybe in software for dev test workloads you can do that um, the quicker provisioning one of the things is always challenging is when you have service vms is it takes a while to spin those up so within Liberty, we basically have in instituted a pool manager so we can have warm spares ready and really cut down that time to provision, especially for workloads that are required to run within a VM. And also we rolled out support for Neutron uh, load balancing V2. Now that the API is final in Neutron, we also want to make sure that we are supporting it. And so we have integrations with a number of different partners. And so talking about our partners, um, you know, with a condo, we we want to have a, a growing ecosystem um, and provide that. We provide services and support and then also want to mix and match what's available to deployer needs. And so, so one of the earliest ones we've started partnering with is Cumulus Networks in terms of providing access to their dynamic uh, lightweight network virtualization. Um, it basically what it allows you to do is get hardware accelerated VXLAN. Um, it's a very simple deployment model. Um, and it's, again, it uses standard OpenStack tooling um, so that it's easy to maintain, deploy, you're not having to write special, um, special tooling to deploy it. And so this kind of gives you a little bit of overview. I'm not going to dive in too deeply because this afternoon um, we'll have a much longer session about what this integration looks like. One of our other partners is Nginx um, from the load balancing side. Uh, we provide, basically, it gives you the opportunity to provide self-service Nginx to your tenants within, within your deployment. Uh, it's fairly simple. Again, it's standard OpenStack tooling because it's supporting the V2 API. Um, in terms of what specifically is available, we support both Nginx and Nginx Plus. Um, it's simple provisioning. Um, also, you can get access to, if you're running a, if you want to integrate the Nginx Plus product, you have access to the dashboard. Um, and then, you know, Nginx is something that a lot of people have been, we've all been running for a long, long time. And so in terms of, you know, where Conda, you know, kind of our bona fides as a company, um, you know, we, we, we developed a Conda for OpenStack. Um, it was the first thing we integrated with. Um, we've been running, in, it was, it's been running in production now for, for years. Um, you know, which is kind of, it's not something, it may seem new by being in the, new, in the big tent, but it's not at all. On a daily basis, it's managing thousands of um, virtual network functions. Um, 
a star, a Conda provides support for both Juno, Kilo, and Liberty in making an, a star compatible with all three releases. So depending on your deployment, you get the opportunity um, to deploy. You don't have to have the latest and greatest. And then lastly, it's, com it's compatible with a number of different overlays in terms of a number of different, um, sorry, L2 orchestration systems, either based on OVS, Linux Bridge, um, you know, even we've been testing it with the in-development OV, uh, OVN project, um, as well as NSX. So, thank you very much.